uh, medalist. And it looks like he's also competed in traditional events where he placed second in the Kung Fu World Championships. And more recently uh, in Morocco, a first place medalist in this event. Over 10 years of Wushu experience. And we sit back right now watching our first athlete in competition in this Daoshu event. As with all of the other um, Taolu events in Wushu senior level competition, these routines are comprised of what we call optional routines. Optional routines are choreographed uh, by each individual athlete or, or their coach. And uh, within the routine, what, what are we looking at uh, in terms of content and in terms of uh, different types of maneuvers in the broadsword, Anthony? So Alan, we're looking for a lot of martial element. So you'll see there's a lot of jabs, a lot of wrapping and twining. Uh, you'll see some displays of flexibility. So he just did a drop stance right there. And a, a lot of initial movements were acrobatic. Um, some of the, and those are what some of the C judges will be looking for. And here we are, our first athlete, Firas, completing his routine. So a typical routine is approximately 1 minute and 20 seconds, uh, give or take up to some as long as a minute and 30 seconds. The uh, judges are looking for particular required movements uh, in each different event uh, in the uh, broadsword or the uh, Dao Shu. Uh, as Anthony mentioned, there are compulsory strikes, blocks, uh, representing the attacks and defenses using the weapon. And as well, there are acrobatic or what we call difficulty components, uh, which make up for the total mark, uh, which is out of 10. Here's our replay. So either athlete awaits his score we will see the score made up of the three grouping of judges. And this is the first World Wushu Championships where they extended the B group, the overall performance, to from three to five judges. This is designed to expand the disparity between scores. So we see the final score for our athlete is 8.22, which is made up of a group A score of 4.6, a group B score of 2.27, and a group C score of 1.35. And how would you say that sets as a standard or a ranking uh, for what we can expect in uh, this group of athletes, Anthony? So 8.22 is not a bad score. It is probably will not get him in the top ranking. At this level, we're looking for about a minimum of 9.5 for being one of the top three. We have a few, we have a few veterans. Uh, next up. This is our athlete from Macau. Casper Jakob Palace of Poland. No, no, I believe this is our athlete uh, from Macau. Knock in um, Wu. Knock in Wu. It looks like we do have a scratch. Again, we have Knock in Wu of Macau. Knock in Wu is the veteran of the World Wushu Championships. Placing a silver medal in the traditional event Da Dao in 2015. And it, as well, he was a bronze medalist in the Changshuan event in 2013.
Here we see his first difficulty component displayed. That was a outside lotus kick, followed by a combination of a front jumping slap kick and a inside crescent kick into a split landing. Many athletes choose to place most of their difficulty components at the beginning of the routine in order to utilize their endurance and their stamina to place other elements in the latter parts. That's correct. Rarely will we see athletes adding more of the difficult acrobatic moves towards the end. Those who do have the benefit of having uh, stamina and appealing to the judges. So throughout this uh, broadcast, we're going to be educating a lot of our audience members on the various elements uh, that makes up a wushu routine. And we'll slowly talk about uh, the uh, various different uh, scoring methods uh, and elements that the judges are perhaps looking for in uh, wushu competition. That was our athlete from Macau, Nok Inwu. Competing in men's Dao Su. He is the second of 54 competitors in today's men's Dao Shu event. So, Alan, this is, he was the first athlete to throw in some B level uh, degree of difficulty moves. Can you tell us more about the, the three levels that we will be seeing today? Well, let's talk about that. Um, the first uh, element of uh, competition that we'll look at is the difficulty component. As we see the final score of 9.433 for our athlete from Macau. His difficulty component, which is what we call the Group C component in Wushu competition, is out of two marks. So an athlete must design and choreograph his routine to comprise of difficulty movements which have various values in terms of uh, different combinations and they want to add up those combinations and values to as close to 2.0 as possible. Next, then, sorry, go ahead Anthony. Next up we have from Sri Lanka, Hasika Disanayaka Budiyang Silaj. And I was mentioning uh, for the difficulty comp components, uh, out of a score of 2.0, it is on a uh, deduction basis of whether or not the athletes are able to complete the uh, elements required in that difficulty uh, component. These uh, difficulty movements, uh, such as one here displayed as a outside crescent kick, is summed up in terms of the rotation, the type of kick, the height of the kick, and is deducted and uh, qualified by the judges on whether it is done properly and meets the criteria of standard uh, of that particular movement. Some of the new additions to the rules we've seen, uh, other than the B-level judges, are actually more deduction codes in the quality of movements. You'll see that now the judges can deduct for hand positions, which they haven't been do doing before. Uh, this is in regards to the fist and the palm. And what, ap what the judges are looking for is a closed fifth fist with their thumb covering both two fingers. Um, and for the, op for the palm, having all four fingers tucked together and the thumb also tucked. And that was our third athlete, Hasika Mudia Ilanslage of Sri Lanka. So really, as an individual performance routine, uh, the uh, Taolu competition is based on the athlete being able to display the martial art elements uh, behind all of the 
uh, movements that they perform in these routines, much like choreography in uh, film and television. Um, and as an individual performer on the floor, uh, I think it's essential, um, which is why the overall performance is valued at a uh, score of 5 out of the 10, is to really demonstrate the uh, application of um, any type of strike, attack, or uh, defense or block uh, that is within the routine. So what the judges are specifically looking for in those criteria is certain required elements such as a strike, such as a kick, and uh, such as a defensive uh, maneuver uh, of a block or whatnot using, uh, in this case, the broadsword. This is Hasika's first World Wushu Championships. He was a gold medalist in the 2018 South Asian Championships in the event of Changchen. And here we have his score of 7.383, placing him in third. Looks like he's got quite a few deductions in terms of the quality of movements. Most, mostly stance work and the group C, which are the acrobatic movements with rotations. A lot less awards. Next up from Chile, we have Ariel Mancila Barrientos. So during competition at the World Championships, we see athletes really globally that uh, practice the sport around the world. Um, we have representatives from uh, South America, from North America, from Europe, and of course uh, from Asia and as well uh, Africa. Um, so we're seeing a big, big range uh, in terms of uh, ability and uh, is that what we should expect in terms of the scoring? Uh, are there particular regions that might be stronger than the other others, Anthony? Yeah, this, this being rooted in China, a lot of the Asian athletes are particularly stronger in, the, are in, in these events. Um, but in the last three World Wushu Championships, we've seen some of the athletes in the world go up. I mean, the, it's the skill level. As the sport has been expanding uh, globally, uh, so has, of course, the um, quality of training and as well the uh, performance of the athletes. Um, and each year of competition, we see athletes attempting uh, more and more difficult routines along with choreography and uh, the display of um, the skill sets uh, that are involved in uh, Wushu. Ariel is a veteran of the world stage, competing since 2012 internationally. We just saw him perform C-level difficulties, C and B. And here we can already see the level of skills uh, different between the last three countries. More speed, rhythm. And that is Ariel Mancila Barrientos of Chile. Finishing up his broadsword routine. There's a replay of 720. And what are we looking for in terms of uh, criteria in the rotation and landing? In terms of uh, several of the difficulty components, uh, we're looking at the application of the movement in terms of the actual kick, for example. Uh, we look at how high the kick is and what the required height is for the kick in order to make it qualify as a difficulty or effective kick. And uh, typically what the judges are looking for is the height of the kick must be above the shoulder. Uh, 
And that's the uh, the A judges, right? Correct. So, um, sorry, no, the, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, criteria of the uh, judging, uh, that is correct. However, the C judges are the ones that determine whether or not the athlete completes the movement. And uh, what has to do with that is typically the rotation of the maneuver and as well the quality of the landing of the uh, maneuver. And final score for Ariel is 8.493. And as you were saying, in that 720 that he did, we did see that both of his feet did not land together. And I'm not sure whether or not he actually completed the uh, maneuver either. Right. So that is what determines uh, whether or not he achieves that score um, or the value of that score. Next up from the Philippines, we have John Zeth. Rapato Gajo, 17 years old, one of our younger athletes. This is his first World Wushu Championships. Alan, what are we looking for in terms of age for these athletes? Typical ages of the athletes who complete uh, who compete at the um, World Senior Championships are typically I would I would say about a minimum of 16, 17 years old uh, and above because uh, there are Junior World Championships which are for uh, under the age of 18 and of course uh, as you begin or enter the senior level, you're probably just about at that transition phase out of the uh, junior championships. So uh, we can see some athletes which are as young as uh, I would say 16 and 17, but the majority of the athletes are likely to be above the age of 18. So here we see uh, Jonathan and he has fairly executed uh, some of the uh, difficulty maneuvers and as well a lot of the compulsory movements in a much more cleaner format than we uh, saw in some of the previous athletes. So just uh, by that note, um, I would expect that uh, the scoring of um, our athlete from the Philippines to be much more higher and as well um, a much more concise uh, performance. That's right, I agree. He's got a lot more stamina. Uh, a lot more explosive power and his degree of difficulty were pretty sharp. That was John Zep Rapata Gajo of Philippines. Each routine being made up of different martial arts related movements. You see as he kicked 